It's been almost two months since Apple released their new M series of chips and they are amazing machines. We have been testing and using them, but there's still one question that we have not answered that you guys keep asking us about. Obviously the M3 Max is very powerful, but with that, it's not a true comparison when we're looking at the M2 and M1 Max because Apple upped the price by 500 bucks if you wanna get the full performance that they showed off. So how does the binned $3,500 version that actually is the same price as the M2 Max top spec actually compare? And it's interesting because Apple actually downgraded them in a way. If we look at the graphics cores, we now have 30 instead of 38. And if we look at the RAM, well, now it runs at 300 gigabit per second instead of 400. That's 25% less memory bandwidth. Now, yes, we do have 36 gigs of RAM compared to 32, so that is a small upgrade, but it's just a difference of how it is laid out and how many chips require that. Now, Apple also changed up how much SSD chips go into this machine, and when we look at the actual speeds, they got faster. 6,271 compared to 5,600 for write. Now, in terms of the read speed, they are very similar, so not a big difference there. Now, as we get into the CPU and graphics performance, I wanna point out that the M3 is based on three nanometer and the bend version actually has two more CPU performance cores compared to the previous one. With that said, on screen, Apple advertised performance for the 16 oh, core like that version actually that to take you don't a get bit unless you're willing to spend 500 bucks more than you got in the past. Now, getting into single core CPU performance, we see a really nice increase. And that is because the CPU can now run at four gigahertz, slightly higher than that, compared to 3.5. So that is a nice gain. And as far as multi-core, this is where we have a massive difference, almost 20,000 compared to 14,000. That is actually 38% better performance. And the crazy thing is we're only using 17% more power. 40 watts compared to 33. Now I wanna mention that I will be talking about battery life and a little surprise in just a bit, along with fan noise. Now as far as graphics performance, it actually got worse with the version of the M3 Max that costs the same as last year. Now that is because of course we have less graphics cores and that sucks and even though we have less, they are actually using the same amount of power to get this performance. And looking at gaming performance, once again, the M3 Max is worse for the same price. It is a worse bang for the buck. Now, we do have the ray tracing and some other improvements as well, and I'll give you those numbers in just a bit. For web browsing, we do have a little bit of an increase in performance, and I have to say, actually using them day to day, you cannot tell the difference. They are very close. Now, if you do tough 3D web browsing applications like Figma here, smoothness is all the same. This project is brought to you by 500 Designs, uh, one of the best studios in in California and so you can't really tell the difference in exporting 12 high resolution layers. Well, yeah, it's a little bit faster, but honestly, that is not worth it. Now getting into Cinebench, which is gonna hammer the CPUs, we saw a massive improvement in performance. I'm talking about 50% faster. And the crazy thing is we are only using 16% more power to get 50% more performance. This is the kind of upgrade we needed going from the M1 Max. Now, in terms of fan noise and temperatures, I definitely noticed some differences. At the end of this 10 minute test, both of them running at 102 degrees Celsius for the hottest performance core, but the fan speed was about 1000 RPMs higher for the M3 Max version. And you definitely can tell the sound difference. The M2 Max, you barely hear it, but this one starts to get a little bit annoying. Now, on a positive note, if we're looking at the temperatures of the CPU and GPU block, it is running quite a bit cooler because of the higher airflow, it's ejecting more of that air out of your laptop. And I will tell you how to kind of improve this in just a bit. Now using graphics to render in Cinebench, the difference is insane. Almost double the 
performance because of the ray tracing cores. And this is where the M3 series gets very impressive, even the binned version. And even more impressive is that it's using 25 watts instead of 30 to do this because the ray tracing cores are very efficient. Now, if you use Logic, we use the new Logic 2 benchmark. You guys can look it up. And we saw a huge improvement in how many tracks uh, were able to be played. Now, there's other things layered in here. You guys can check that out. But that was very impressive and a much bigger difference than we got from the M1 Max to the M2 Max. Now, for you guys out there that use Xcode, we saw roughly a 40% difference. And this is once again, very impressive. Obviously, we saw those differences in a Geekbench. And even though we have slower memory for both these applications, well, it definitely is not hurting the system. Uh, all the other updates are making up for this. And if you use Blender for rendering, once again, we saw almost double the performance. Very impressive, even with the bin version. So if we look at graphics, well, it was actually slower, but for this kind of productivity, I mean, this is a nice improvement. So for people to do productivity, for all these various things we just covered, that is really, really nice. Now, if you do video editing like we do, this is where things start to shift. Exporting our standard H.265 project with LUTs and effects, the speed is identical because unfortunately, we don't have any new encoders and both these systems have no issue with the kind of editing we do. You guys see we have different graphs, we have screenshots, we have B-roll, including some AK B-roll, and they are the same, no dropped frames. Um, it is completely fine. Now, I also wanted to test out uh, rendering a timeline. This is what some people say that they need to do. And how much faster is the new chip? Well, it is a little bit faster, but not by much at all. And this is for almost a 16 minute real world project that is heavy with B-roll, charts, screenshots, and a lot of different footage. Now, if you work with ProRes, I exported ProRes Rod to ProRes, it's a five minute project, and the difference is negligible. They use ProRes decoders and encoders, they are the same, that has been the limitation, and even going up to 8K ProRes Rod to ProRes, well, the speed difference, once again, is so minor. With that denoising, some Blackmagic RAW with temporal and spatial denoising, both actually got 24 frames per second, and the GPUs were pretty much maxed out. So it's nice that they could do it, but there's no improvement. And I guess that makes sense because our graphics performance, as far as um, in metal, it was actually slightly worse. So don't expect any improvement. And throwing the toughest thing I could at it, which is Canon 8K RAW, we finally start to see some differences. It, once again, it's not insane, but it is there. So if you work with red footage or Canon footage that's raw, where you don't have special decoders for it, yes, you'll see some of that improvement. Uh, but for everybody else doing video editing, we're really not getting anything at all. And that kind of sucks. So for us here at Max Tech, it is not worth having the M3 Max version. It's kind of not a great update. Now for photo editing here, we do see a nice improvement, 33% faster. And as far as the editing itself, even for our high resolution images, um, all the sliders, all that stuff is perfectly the same. They're both so powerful that you're not noticing a difference. So unless you're rendering a ton of photos or exporting a ton of photos, uh, you're not gonna see a crazy, crazy improvement. And now let's talk about battery life because if we're testing all of these programs on the system and that usually takes four to five hours, we're sitting waiting for a long time, it's pushing the system. Well, at the end of that, the M2 Max, well, it had 5% remaining compared to 20% on the M3 Max binned version. That is actually an impressive difference because even though during our Cinebench and a couple other tests we're using more power, a lot of times it's getting done quicker and that saves you battery life or for the easier tasks, it can use less power. So that is cool. But looking at the overall real world battery life, we're seeing a nice improvement uh, as far as heavy tasks, about one hour better and for light tasks, about two hours 
better battery life. And that is really, really nice. Now, there also is a low power mode. Now, I did a full video on this going over the unbin version. You guys could check it out if you're interested. But the crazy thing is the performance, even the low power mode, it beats out the M2 Max in full performance. And at the same time, it runs completely silent with the fans turned off pretty much always and staying very cool. And that is because it only uses 20 watts to run Geekbench. So we have almost half the power that is used, same thing for other tasks, while maintaining a very similar level of performance. So if you're trying to decide between these two systems and you care about how loud a system is, how hot it runs, well, if you wanna use low power mode, the M3 Max is a killer because of the three nanometer design um, that is a lot more efficient, the better efficiency cores, and you're gonna get really incredible battery life. Along with a lot of other tasks I showed you, we had some nice improvements, but for video editing especially, and for web-based applications, you're not gonna see much of a difference. So if you can score a great deal on an M2 Max, and I'll link a great deal down in the description below to Amazon, I might actually pick that up instead if you're considering the same exact price point. Now, if you're willing to spend four grand, the performance actually shoots up quite a bit and that one is nice, but it is unfair. It's an unfair comparison because Apple's making you spend more money this year and that kind of sucks. So overall, I like the machine. I love the new colors, but um, you gotta spend more money and for a lot of people, it is not really worth it. You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next one.